everyone. Thanks for attending my session. Uh, this is uh, Kai Huang. Today I will give you a talk about uh, Intel Trust Domain Extensions Host Kernel Support. Uh, this is a pre-recorded video, but I will be online when this video is being played. So if you have any questions, please ask online and I will be online to answer your questions. So let's get started. So this is today's agenda. I will give you an introduction of TDX and then I will talk about the design and the implementation of the TDX host kernel support. And at the last, I will give you some up current status updates and uh, some future work. So this is an overview of Intel TDX. Um, basically, TDX protects the virtual machine from a malicious host and some physical attacks. Um, so today, uh, for a normal VM, the hypervisor can access its memory and its vCPU status. Um, but for a TDX gets, its memory and its vCPU status are protected from the host kernel. So basically, host kernel is out of the TCB in terms of the TDX. Um, to achieve this, Intel um, introduced a new CPU mode called the Secure Arbitration Mode into Intel's latest CPUs. And uh, uh, similar to the Lexi VMX case, the same mode also has two modes, um, which are the same VMX root mode and the same VMX non-root mode respectively. So the SIM VMX root mode is designed to run a CPU attested software module called the TDX module. It basically acts a trusted hypervisor. And the SIM VMX non-root mode is used to run those protected VMs called the TDs. And the SIM also um, introduced a new SIM range register, which is an isolated um, Range and the TDX module in runs in the in the in the in the memory range specified by this new SIM SIM register. And underneath um, TDX leverages MKTME to provide the crypto protection to the virtual machines. So basically, TDX uh, um, reserved part of MKTME key ID as TDX private key IDs. And for each uh, um, for each TD, um, one key ID, one TDX private key ID is associated to each uh, TD, so it is crypto protected. And as a, a TDX private key ID can only be used by the software run in the same mode. Um, if uh, the host kernel tries to use uh, a TDX private key ID to access uh, um, the uh, guest's memory. It's basically treated as an illegal um, behavior by the hardware. So um, the, hub, the host kernel communicates to the TDX module using a new SIM core instruction. And uh, after some handling, the TDX module returns to the hypervisor using a new SIM return instruction. So basically, the TDX module uh, implements a set of uh, SIM core leaf functions to allow the host kernel uh, to initialize and to run and to create and run uh, TD guests. As you can see, uh, in TDX, the TDX module sits in the core position. Um, it basically is a CPU attested trusted VM and it is eventually loaded by the ACM, so it can be trusted. It implements a set of SIM core leaf functions to allow the host to initialize the TDX module and to create and to run the TDX guests. So in practice, it is loaded by the bus, and the kernel needs to initialize it before the KVM can use it to create and run the virtual machines and it can be a runtime updated by the kernel. So this talk will focus on the initializing the TDX module. Um, before talking about how to initialize the TDX module, uh, let me firstly talk about how TDX module does the memory management. Um, 
TDX uh, basically imposes additional security and uh, functionality requirements on the memory. So as a result, TDX introduced a concept of uh, convertible memory regions. Um, during the machine boot, the BIOS generates a list of convertible memory regions. And uh, the machine check actually verifies um, the list of convertible memory regions provided by us that uh, uh, they are, the memories are actually physically present and they can meet TDX security and functional requirements during the machine boot. And this list is static during the machine's runtime. Um, the second concept is a physical address metadata table, which is a metadata that used by the TDX module to track each uh, TDX memory page status for example, the page's ownership and the status, the page is owned by which VM, those things. So it basically, it is similar to kernel the structure page. The third is uh, um, called the TD memory region structure. It's a TDMR for short. So um, um, although, TD, uh, although TDX introduced a concept of convert memory regions, but uh, those are uh, memory regions are not automatically usable by the TDX module. And as a step of initializing the TDX module, uh, the kernel needs to select which memory regions that uh, TDX will use and pass those memory regions to the TDX module. And uh, mm, TDX uses uh, the data structure TDMR to pass uh, those memory regions to the TDX module. And uh, uh, TDX only supports a limited number, number of TDMRs, and each TDMR must be one gigabyte aligned, and the size must be in one gigabyte um, granularity. And for each TDMR, there are three PAMT entries to track uh, uh, TDMRs uh, each page status. So TDX supports four, uh, three page sites, 4K, two megabytes, and one, one gigabyte. So each T uh, TDMI has uh, three PMTs respectively to track uh, each page for all the page sizes. And uh, because TDMI is one gigabyte aligned and uh, the size is one gigabyte granular granularity, um, but the memory regions, the TDX memory regions normally are not one gigabyte, one gigabyte aligned. So there might be some memory holes within one TDMR, and those memory holes must be put into the TDMR's reserved areas. And if the PMT overlaps one TDMR, the overlapping part must be in TDMR's reserved areas too. And the TDX only supports a limited number of reserved areas for one TDMR. Um, in terms of how to initialize the TDX module, uh, the TDX module defines a, a sequence of steps to do that. Uh, the first step is a global scope initialization, which requires to call one SIM call on any CPU. Um, the second step is a logical CPU, a logical CPU scope module initialization, which requires to call one SIM call on all logical both enabled logical CPUs. And uh, if any CPU is offline and the uh, SIM call cannot be done, a later step of initialization will fail. Um, the next step is the kernel is responsible to choose all the memory regions that will be used by the TDX module. And uh, to construct an array of TDMRs to cover all those regions. So after uh, the array of TDMRs are generated, the kernel needs to configure the TDX module with uh, the array of TDMRs, also with a global TDX KID. Um, the next step is uh, to flush cache of all APMTs, because uh, uh, in later steps, uh, basically the global TDX KID will be used by the TDX module to initialize all the PMTs. So before that, uh, the kernel needs to flush uh, all the dirty cache lines of the PMTs. Otherwise, they may silently corrupt uh, 
uh, the PMTs after TDX module initializes them. Um, the next one step is to configure the global TDX KID on all the packages, which requires to call one SIM call on uh, uh, one CPU for each package. Um, the last step is to initialize all those uh, TDMRs that are passed to the TDX module. And after all those TDMRs are initialized, the KVM can um, use the TDX module to create uh, and run the um, TDX guests. And from here, I will talk about uh, the design and the implementation of a TDX uh, host kernel support. Um, firstly, from high level perspective, um, the goal is to use minimal code to enable TDX at the first uh, submission to the upstream. And uh, any additional functionalities and optimizations can be done in the future. Uh, this is because uh, um, initializing the TDX module is not a travel in terms of a line of code. So uh, at the first stage, we targeted to use minimal code to, in to enable TDX. And in terms of a design, um, a major uh, design is to initialize the TDX module at the runtime rather than always initialize it during the kernel boot. Uh, the, there are three reasons to do that. Um, the first one is uh, to avoid uh, the non-travel memory and the CPU time consumption when the kernel is, when the TDX is enabled by the BIOS, but the kernel has no intention to use TDX. Uh, the second is to avoid doing the, uh, the VMX on in the non-KVM core kernel, uh, because initializing the TDX module requires uh, uh, the SIM cores, but the SIM core requires a CPU already in VMX operation. So if we wanted uh, to uh, initialize the module in uh, during kernel boot, we have to um, add the VMX on support uh, during, uh, in the core kernel. And uh, but uh, um, from long term point of view, uh, reference based VMX on VM, uh, VMX off approach uh, is likely needed um, because. Um, uh, in the future, um, more kernel components is likely to uh, is likely needed to be modified to support the TDX2. And the KVM so far is the only user of TDX, and the KVM already handles the VMX and the VMX off. So uh, initializing the module uh, at the KVM phase um, allows us to avoid uh, um, doing a temporary VMX on solution in the core kernel for now. And it is also more flexible to support a TDX module runtime up updates um, because after you update the TDX module, uh, the initialization sequence needs to be done again for the new uh, TDX module. So the um, <coughs> so likely the core kernel in our current design, the core kernel will just provide a one function to allow the caller to enable TDX. And uh, this function will be provided we will be protected with uh, mutex with with a, a state machine and uh, a mutex because uh, uh, theoretically multiple callers can call that function to enable TDX. So as already mentioned, as one step of initializing the TDX module, the kernel is responsible for choosing all the memory regions that will be used by the TDX module as TDX memory and pass all, uh, all those regions uh, to the TDX module. And after configuring the TDX module with uh, those memory regions, uh, no more memory can be added to the TDX module at runtime. So basically, the, all the memory TDX module can use are fixed after initializing the TDX module. Um, in order to avoid having to modify the page allocator to distinguish uh, TDX and non-TDX memory allocation, um, for, for example, um, we don't want to have a new uh, GFP uh, TDX flag when we allocate memory. So currently we choose just to guarantee that all the pages in the page allocator are TDX pages. Um, this is done by um, convert uh, all the boot time system memory as a TDX memory. Um, 
So this is because so the TDX module is initialized at uh, runtime and uh, the core kernel does not uh, handle VMX on now. So during kernel boot, we actually cannot get all the uh, we cannot get the list of uh, the CMRs. So uh, in this approach, we require all the boot time system memory uh, actually as a convertible memory. This is uh, true in in practice. And uh, all the system memory, all the boot time system memory can be got by using the memory block data structure during the kernel boot. And uh, to prevent adding any new memory to the page allocated at the runtime, we reject the, any memory from going online for hot added memory, uh, if that memory is not uh, in the CMR. Um, the, um, but we still allow the memory hot plug to be uh, to to happen, because uh, um, although that um, uh, a non CMR memory cannot be online at runtime, so allowing that memory uh, still to be hot added um, can still allow that memory um, can still be potentially used by the driver, for example. We can theoretically move those uh, new added memory to the zone DMA, so they can be used by some driver, but not as a page allocator. So after the kernel uh, selects uh, the, all the memory regions that uh, will be used by the TDX module, the kernel needs to construct an array of TDMRs uh, to cover all of, all of them, and to keep the code simple. Um, we use a simple um, solution to do that, that we always try to create a new TDMR to cover one TDX memory block. And uh, for the PMT allocation, we use a contiguous alloc page to do that because uh, the PMT must be physically contiguous. And uh, at runtime, we can use a contiguous, a contiguous alloc page to do that. And uh, as we mentioned before, um, if one PMT overlaps with one particular TDMR, the overlapping part must be put to the TDMR's reserved areas too. So, in order to um, uh, in order to reduce the reserved areas occupied by the PMT, we allocate uh, three PMTs together for one TDMR. And after um, all the TDMRs are constructed. Uh, the last step is to initialize the, all the TDMRs. And for simplicity, we just initialize the TDMRs one by one. Um, actually, TDX uh, supports uh, initializing different TDMRs on different CPUs sim simultaneously, um, but that is not uh, in the first uh, submission. Um, as mentioned before, the uh, TDX uh, uh, imposes additional security and functionality requirements on uh, memory. So TDX has interaction with uh, ACPI memory hot plug. Uh, ensure that TDX does not support hot plug of any CMR memory. Uh, because the CMRs must be physically present during the machine boot, and the machine check will actually verify those uh, um, those memory are physically represent and can meet uh, TDX security requirements. So, and the CMR, the list of CMR is static after machine boot, so TDX does not support how to add any additional CMR memory at runtime. Uh, TDX also does not support hot removal of any CMR memory because this may result in physical re 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 replacement of CMR memory, which will result in um, potential physical attack. So a properly functioning uh, BIOS should uh, never send an ACPI memory hot plug event of CMR memory to the kernel. Um, however, architecturally, the TDX uh, does not forbid the hot plug of non-CMR memory. So, the uh, if if so, the uh, for the non-CMR memory, um, the memory hot plug can happen uh, normally. Uh, TDX also has interaction with ACPI CPU hot plug. Um, in short, TDX doesn't support the ACPI CPU hot plug either. Uh, the machine check actually verifies all boot time present CPUs 
that they are TDX compatible before the bus before um, the, before TDX can actually be enabled. And the machine check actually keeps those information such as uh, total number of CPU packages, total number of logical CPUs for the TDX module to use later. And uh, a non-buggy bus should never send the uh, ACPI CPU hot plug event to the kernel. So in terms of how to handle ACPI CPU and the memory hot plug, uh, at the core ACPI level, um, we will leverage uh, the ACPI device's ejectable flag to prevent the hot removal. Uh, because uh, the kernel needs to treat uh, the CMR memory and the non-CMR memory hot plug separately. So uh, currently the ejectable flag is uh, fixed uh, during the device lifetime if the device supports uh, um, ACPI EG0 or EGD uh, method. Um, so we changed that uh, we wanted to allow the ACPI scan handlers attach callback to set the ejectable flag to false so that the core ACPI code can just uh, um, refuse the uh, ejection event when it, when it happens. So in terms of uh, how to handle C ACPI CPU hot plug, uh, we wanted to reject the how to add the new CPU because the TDX does not support hot adding any physical CPU. And uh, But uh, at the same time, and at the same time, for all the boot time present CPUs, uh, we still want all normal things uh, to be done normally. For example, um, we still wanted uh, to be able to create the ACPI campaigns. So we just set the ejectable to force at the end of the attach uh, callback. So for the ACPI memory hot plug, the handling is similar to the ACPI CPU hot plug. Um, we still wanted to allow normal things to be ha to, to happen for boot time present memory devices. So um, so for the CMR memory, we just set a ejectable flag to force at the end of the attach. So any CMR memory will not device will not be physically um, removed. It will be re rejected by the core ACPI code. And for non-CMI memory, we do nothing, so it can act. So it it, it can act normally. Um, and uh, the we still allow the memory to be hot hot added, as we mentioned before. We only prevent the non-CMI memory to go online, so that no new pages will be added to the page allocator. In such a way that we can guarantee all the pages in the page allocator are TDX pages. So the last one is a KX support. So uh, when TDX module is successfully initialized, we need to flush cache of all TDX private memory before booting to the new kernel. Uh, this is because the hardware doesn't guarantee all the guarantee the cache coherency between the different KIDs. So um, so uh, the the dirty cache line of the all the TDX private memory must be flushed before booting to the booting to the new kernel because they are associated with uh, t, uh, the TDX private key IDs. And uh, in order, uh, in terms of how to do that, we just uh, do WB invalidate and stop this CPU when the TDX is enabled by the bus. This is uh, similar to the MD's uh, solution. So that is all for design and implementation. And uh, the last part is the uh, current status and the future work. So uh, for the current status, uh, I have already sent out the version 5. And uh, any comments are highly appreciated. Uh, I'm still working on the version 6. And uh, I will send out the version 6 very, very shortly. So as mentioned, uh, the first submission will uh, only use minimal code to enable TDX, and uh, um, so the new functionalities will be done in the future. So uh, for example, um, we will add the support to exposing TDX private key ID information and the TDX module information to the CCFS, so the US-based software can use those information, uh, for example, to uh, to check how many TDX guests can the machine support. And in terms of optimizations, 
the first is initialization of TDMRs. As I mentioned, um, in the current uh, um, in, uh, implementation, all the TDMRs are initialized just one by one. But the TDX actually allows it to initialize different TDMRs on different CPU uh, simultaneously. Um, the second one is uh, some corner case handling of constructing TDMRs. So currently we use a simple uh, algorithm to do that. Um, um, that we create one TDMR for each uh, memory block so that if there are many memory blocks, we may run out of TDMRs. And, uh, and the one TDMR actually sub only supports a limited number of reserved areas. So if one TDMR has lots of memory holes, we may run out of uh, reserved areas too. So, um, and uh, those corner cases can be optimized using some way. So that will be done in the future. Uh, the last one is uh, TDX module initialization error handling. Um, currently, all the any error happened during the TDX module initialization will be treated as a fatal error that will result in shutting down the TDX module um, because there's no reason to leave the module in some middle status. And uh, uh, but uh, for some error, actually, we don't have to shut down the module, but uh, the caller can try again. For example, if uh, uh, the TDX module initialization fails uh, due to out running out of memory, uh, we can record some of the internal status of initializing the TDX module and, uh, re and let the corner to uh, free some memory and call the, uh, the function again to finish the initialization. So here are some references. The first one is a link of the version 5 patches. The second one is all the specification of the TDX. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much.